Gopi Janavallava Giri Vara Janahi Gopi Giri Nahi Dissur Nandhanna Raja Janahanjana Yasar Nandhanna Jajan Hari <laughs> Hari Hari Ram Mahare Ram Mahare Ram Mahare Hari Hare Krishna Hari Hari Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. The tiger, the tiger, the tiger, the tiger, in the tiger, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Bong, Hari Ever <laughs> I chose one verse from Bhagavad Gita from the second chapter. Actually, it begins where Arjun is refusing to fight, and now Krishna is going to respond to his refusal. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
So this is chapter 2, verse 11. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Asochan Arvasodas Chwam Pratyavadam Chibash Suse Katasun Akatat Sumscha Nanu so chanti panditaha. Translation The Supreme Personality of God had said, speaking to Arjun, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise neither lament for the living or the dead. <clears throat> Purport. The Lord at once took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, called him in, calling him indirectly a fool. The Lord said, you are talking like a learned man, but you do not well know what is actually learned, or who is actually learned. One who knows what is the body and what is the soul does not lament for any stage of the body, neither living nor in the dead condition. As explained in the later chapters, it will be clear that knowledge means to know matter and spirit and the controller of both. Arjun argued that religious principles should be given more importance than politics or sociology, but he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul, and the supreme source is even more important than religious formularities. And because he was lacking in that knowledge, he did not have posed himself, he should not have posed himself as a very learned man. As he did not happen to be very learned, he was consequently lamenting for something which was unworthy of lamentation. The body is born and is destined to be vanquished today or tomorrow. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. One who knows this is actually learned, and for him there is no cause of lamentation, lamentation regardless of the condition of the material body. Umagyan timirandasya ganajana salakaya chaksun militam yena tasmai shri guruvena maha shri jaitanya manobhistam stapnitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadati kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurvani Prachadine Nirishesha Sunyavari Pastyatyade Sakarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. Mm. Arjun's being chastised because he's more attached to the material than to the words of Krishna. The words of Krishna are actually the principles of spiritual life. And those words are actually the means by which one can come to the spiritual platform. The words of the Lord, the words of the Lord's pure devotees are the same. There's no difference in the sense that the words of the pure devotee are coming directly from the Lord. So the source is the same, although the medium may be different. So here, the Lord is speaking. You have so many so much knowledge, you're acting like a learned man, you're speaking very uh, sophisticatedly, <laughs> you're giving nice arguments, but it's all based on the body. <laughs> and therefore, you don't know actually what is knowledge, although you're posing yourself as a learned person. <laughs> he calls him a fool. <laughs> uh, it's okay, the spiritual master can call the, the disciple a fool. Sometimes it's not so popular nowadays, but, <laughs> but that is one of the ways to remember, wake up the 
the disciple. And Krishna says directly, you don't know. And so now he will explain. And Prabhupada gives the points here that uh, that there's knowledge means to know the difference between what is eternal and what is temporary. And what is temporary remains so, and what is eternal remains so. In the sense that everything material is temporary and everything spiritual is eternal. So to know what is spiritual, what is material, is the foundation for knowing what is eternal and what is temporary. So Arjun, he's basing his arguments and logic around his attachment for his friends, relatives, family members, and so many things, and the future political and social welfare of the world. Krishna is saying, you know, I, you sound very nice, but this is not really important. What's really important is to understand that uh, that to engage in devotional service is the principal eternality. And so if you don't act according to my words, then you're subject to the material energy. And therefore Krishna is explaining. Now we see nowadays, um, people are becoming more and more concerned about, you know, the temporary nature of this body. It's always been there. In fact, it's, it was explained that, uh, the amount of deaths by car accident around the world every year is in hundreds of thousands. <laughs> so now the amount of deaths and virus is starting to climb into that same category. It's interesting because the car accident deaths are going down because there's not so many cars anymore. I don't know. <laughs> so they're exchanging one form of death for another. And so <laughs> people are getting all excited about that death, but it's always been a hair. <laughs> death is part of life. <laughs> as long as you have a material body, uh, it's moving towards its destiny. And that is that it will stop functioning at one point, And that is called death. Of course, we describe it in that way, but the material body is never alive. What makes the material body alive is the soul. And when the soul is not there, that's called death. And when the soul is there, that is called life. The material body has no life in itself. It's just a combination of umir apanol bayo kamana buri evacha ahankar itiyame bina a combination of eight material elements, five gross and three subtle. And it works, it looks good, and it looks like it's alive, but it's not. <laughs> Just like you can see, you look at a car from a distance and you'll see the car is going left, it's going right, going backwards, doing so many things. But the car is dead. It's just a piece of just rubber and, and metal and various types of materials. And all put together in a certain way, but the driver is making the car move. And so the driver, this body, is the soul. Actually, there's two drivers. There's, there's, it's more like a plane. There's the pilot and a co-pilot. <laughs> the co-pilot is Krishna. The pilot is, uh, is uh, us. Of course, the co-pilot's always telling the pilot how to run the plane. <laughs> Actually, he, maybe it's the other way around. Krishna's the pilot and we're the co-pilot. <laughs> we're trying to take charge of the, you know, piloting it. But actually, Krishna knows what's best. So there's two souls in everybody, at least two prominent souls, the Lord and the living entity. So death has always been with us. As long as there is matter, there is death. <laughs> and the whole material world works in that way. Every day, thousands of people die because of various situations. And now 
we're calculating how it's being done in a certain way, and we consider that to be something extraordinary. Well, in one sense it is, because it's all being done very quickly and fast. But a little examination in history, we find that there's always been plagues, there's always been epidemics, there's always been pandemics. You'll see, you go back to the sixth and seventh century, you got the bubonic plague. And of course, they weren't able to calculate death as we can now because we're more, what we say, uh, connected in a communication way. But they estimated between 50 million and 100 million persons died from that plague, which was caused by rats. <laughs> uh, well, that was that. And then, of course, there's been so many other things like AIDS. AIDS came to the forefront in the last 50 years. And people have been dying because of AIDS now. You don't hear it so much, but since AIDS has been introduced in, as a concerned disease, it's been 3.5 3 million uh, people have died because of AIDS. And then, of course, 100 years ago, practically around the same time, there was the Spanish flu, which racked the world with you know, hundreds and thousands of deaths. And so, and then you had Ebola, and then you had spars and so many things, you know. So these things are not new. Um, but when it happens, everyone becomes, you know, very much focused. Well, that's okay, and that's important, and we should do something about it to try to overcome it and take precautions not to be affected by it. But we shouldn't be surprised because this is the nature of the material world. Janma mitra jara vyadi. It's explained that these things come automatically. Birth, death, disease, and old age. They're there as long as there is the material energy. <laughs> uh, disease, old age, and death cause people to become very much, uh, what we say, crisis-oriented. <laughs> That when disease comes, everyone, you see the medical industries all around the world is, is practically the pharmaceutical industry around the world is practically the biggest industry in the world. The drug industry, I think one year, I forgot what year it was, and the gross national product for the drug industry around the world was $70 trillion, trillion, not billion, trillion. So that was just in one year. How much money people spend on medicines, drugs, like that. It's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Hospitals, so many things. That's the nature of the material world. The body is meant to get sick, the body is meant to get old, and the body is meant to die. And these things will happen, and one should take precautions, but one cannot stop them. <laughs> One cannot stop them because they're part of the material energy. As long as the soul is in the material world, these things will always be prominent. Um, of course, one should try to stay healthy. And even in the midst of this crisis, it becomes more of a concern now to become unaffected by that. But what is happening now, the principle of death is becoming more of a concern. Sometimes we would see in the past how when devotees would speak about death and the non-devotees would become unhappy and say, why, do you, why don't you speak about something that is uh, pleasant, happy? Why are you being so morbid? Why are you being so <laughs> you know, negative? We're saying, no, this is a part of life. And in, there, it mentions there was one great statement by one great saint in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. And he gave a very nice statement. He said, there's two things you should always uh, forget and two things you should always remember. 
And then he spoke. He said, the two things you should always forget, you should forget all the bad things that other people have done towards you. Uh, of course, that will require some explanation, but what it really means is that, you know, we should learn how to forgive and forget what people have done to us, which have caused us. And we've done that. We've done things to other people, too, that are not very pleasant. So we want them to forgive us or forget, right? It's just natural. So, and if we hold these negativities towards others because of the bad things, our minds are not, it's always disturbed, there's anxiety. When we think of that person or we remember the situation, we again become unhappy. Sometimes we even become sick because of what we say, mental negativity. So to carry on in life, learn, forget about all the bad things people have done to you. And then he says, then also forget about all the good things you did to others. Mm -hmm. That's a little harder. Because we want to be known as, well, I did so many nice things. You know, I, I did this and I'm going to do this. And I want to be uh, known as a person who's helping and doing so many good things to others like that. We feel good about that. And then when somebody says something about it, we feel even better. <laughs> So, but that might cause some pride. That might cause some arrogance. That might, might cause that we think we are the doer. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you're not the doer. You're the instrument to, to carry out the, uh, the activity of either spiritual or material. But the, uh, the actual doer, which is called karta, karta, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, and what is that verse? John um, uh, 320, 327 in Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the material energy thinks himself the doer of activities, which are in fact carried out material nature. So every activities has five principal ingredients which makes the activity happen and the person who's carrying it out is one-fifth super soul is also there time circumstance and an endeavor is also part of that if the circumstances are not right you can't do it <laughs> and if krishna doesn't give the sanction you can't do it either <laughs> that's the main thing so Anyway, we become somewhat uh, happy about our good deeds, but the, the sages say, forget about it. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing good things, but don't, don't you know, write it in your diary <laughs> or tell everybody about how wonderful you are. And then, of course, he says two things you should always remember. And this might be very important. He said, remember that death can happen at any moment and that uh, we should always remember to, to, to chant the holy names of the Lord. These are the two things he said. Prabhupada was walking on one morning walk and they were in a beautiful park in Denver, Colorado. And Prabhupada was just talking about the temporary nature of everything. And he said, you know, here we are, this park is very nice, everything is very nice, but at any moment, everything could change. It could all of a sudden be fire, and then everything is changed. Just like, just last Sunday, I was chanting Japa in my place in Tihidol, there in northern, north, uh, eastern part of uh, Zagreb, and it was around 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. And then all of a sudden, I thought I had some ecstatic symptoms, but it wasn't. The house was shaking, and the pictures were flying off the wall, and books were going this way and that way. And, and then uh, all of a sudden, it was time to get out of the house. <laughs> all of a sudden, everything just changed in one minute. And it was an earthquake. 
So yeah, I never expected it. I've been live, staying in, in Zagreb for the last, I don't know, I've been coming here since 2002. And I've been living in the place where I've been staying. When I come here for the last five years, I had no idea there was ever anything such as an earthquake fault in the area we were. And when it happened, I was thinking, hmm, is somebody trying to blow up the house downstairs? <laughs> it was I didn't know what to think. And then, of course, I got the word from my my roommate. <laughs> it's it's an earthquake. We got to get out of the house. So, so yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, the whole world just changed in one second, and people were out on the streets and in their cars and going to the safe areas of Zalkreg. And it was a nice party. People were just standing outside in the cold. <laughs> All of a sudden it became a social event. Everybody was feeling safe in the safe area of Zagreb. <laughs> so, but yeah, but well, before that, everything appeared to be nice, and then one second later, all of a sudden, it changed. So this is the nature of the material world. And there's one story where one man, he was, uh, he was a war hero. He had fought in World War II. He was an American. And uh, he had, uh, what we say, did exemplary heroic work he uh, earned so many medals, so many honors in the war. And when he came out, he joined the police force. And as a police force, as a policeman, he worked himself all the way up to police captain. And he became uh, known as a very expert policeman, he was given so many awards. And then well, it was time for him to retire, so he was retiring from the police force. So he had faced death in the war. He had faced death as a policeman. And here he was. He got through it all. So he's on his way to an honorary ceremony for him, for his you know, retirement. So he stops on this one of these uh, drive-in cafes where you can drive your car in. And you can sit in your car and they serve you, you know, coffee, tea, or whatever you want, donuts, <laughs> stuff like that. So he's sitting in his little outdoor cafe. And uh, on the highway above, there's a flyover. And there's a huge truck carrying these big, 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 big tires for big, heavy equipment, huge tires. And if you stand next to the tire, it's about as high as you are. Huge tire. So these tires are being carried by this truck, and the chain broke from one of the tires, and the tire rolled off the truck and start rolling down. It bounced down, fell down, and it landed right on his car, and he was sitting in the car. <laughs> that was it. He had survived the wars. He had survived, in, you know, in the police office. And he went for a cup of coffee, and that was it. <laughs> so this is this is material energy. Don't know. Anytime. Things can happen. Somebody was just telling me the other day, one man was driving in India, and he was on a flyover, and he was looking at his uh yeah, at his phone. And he wasn't paying attention where he was going. He lost control of the car. And the car started to turn. And it fell off the flyover. And went down and fell right on top of a lady. And smashed her. And that was the end. She's out there waiting for a bus. And that was the end. All of a sudden, a car falls on there. You know, so this is a material world. It's such a dangerous place. Padam, padam, ya, vi padam. The Bhagavatam says, uh, it's, not a, it's not a good place, it's dangerous. So now we have the danger of uh, COVID <laughs> or this coronavirus, but this place has always been dangerous, <laughs> right? 
It's always been dangerous. It's never like it's not dangerous. Sun now appears to be more dangerous <laughs> because more people are being infected in the same way. So now it becomes an alarm and so many different things are happening. But devotees should understand that, you know, where do we put our time and energy? And not in the temporary, but in the eternal. So as we go on in life, we realize, yes, you can't make a nice arrangement here. It's just not possible. Everyone's nice arrangement can be immediately changed in a, it's in a few seconds or even less. But if that doesn't happen, it comes anyway in the form of time. So what is important is our eternal life. There's something that is what we say, we don't have much experience of it because of our association with matter. But we know it exists because we hear from the great souls and from the Lord himself that there's a place. And in that verse, Padam, Padam, Yavi, Padam, it says, you know, those who are actually intelligent don't try to make a permanent arrangement here. They keep their eyes on the spiritual world. That is their goal in life. And whatever time they have here in this material world, they work towards achieving the consciousness which will bring them back to the spiritual world or Krishna consciousness, full God consciousness. So that's what is important, is to work on our spiritual life and use whatever time is left. As we say, nobody knows how much time there is left. No one can say they will be living tomorrow. It's not possible, especially nowadays. But still, we know that Krishna is there. And Krishna, he orchestrates life. He orchestrates death. If Krishna wants you to live, nothing can kill you. And if Krishna wants you to not live, nothing can protect you. So for a devotee, he always protects his devotees. So those who take up Krishna consciousness are automatically protected by Krishna. As long as we follow Krishna's guidance, if we go outside of Krishna's guidance, just like Arjun wanted to do something different than Krishna, and Krishna said, you're a fool. <laughs> So he's giving us instructions what to do and how to live life, how to take care of our bodies, how to use our time, and ultimately how to develop our consciousness in, the, in, in devotion to Krishna. So as long as we follow Krishna, we're fully protected. Krishna is protecting everyone, but the materialists don't want Krishna's protection because they don't want Krishna. They want Krishna's energies in the form of what this material world can offer. And therefore, they see that as more important. Krishna says, all right, if that's what you want, there's your protection. Let that be your protection. Let your husband, let your home, let your bank balance, let your you know good intelligence, or even let your, your physical abilities become your protection. But these things cannot protect anybody. <laughs> You know, even if you have so many material qualifications, any time it could all be taken away by a little mosquito. <laughs> mosquito carrying a little bit of, you know, malaria, <laughs> you're finished. <laughs> so, can't even see it. <laughs> so this is the material world. So therefore, devotees know let me take shelter of Krishna. Krishna will protect me. Let me follow his instructions and become Krishna conscious. And of course, take care on the material level. We see his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Although he was a great spiritualist, he took care of his body nicely. He had his morning walks. He had his massages. And he did what he needed to do to make sure his body was functioning so he could serve the mission of Lord Chaitanya nicely. So Prabhupada was very uh, strong 
in his talks to his devotees, take care of your health. It, it is Krishna's body. You need it in order to serve nicely. So, therefore, we've been giving extra precautionary measures now with this virus. Wash your hands every 20 seconds, or wash it for 20 seconds. Some people are washing it every 20 seconds. <laughs> Wash it for 20 seconds, you know, keep a distance with from others. You never know who may have the disease. It, the symptoms don't show right away. And sometimes after a week they come up. So keep distance. Um, this is a very unsocial disease. <laughs> it's causing us to be a little less social. But that's all right for devotees. And we can use our what we say, isolation, to, to read more, to chant more, uh, to go inside our own consciousness more and, and pray more, and to use our time to develop our, our health, our spiritual knowledge, our spiritual energy in terms of chanting. So, um, yeah, so there's some basic principles we have to follow, eat properly, Get a good, good, get more rest. It might ne be necessary to take sufficient amount of rest. And don't try to wear the body out where you you're, you start becoming weak and tired, and then disease becomes easy to enter. So take good care of your health. Do exercise like that. Eat properly like that, and uh, stay happy. <laughs> Because uh, happiness is also a principle of healthiness. <laughs> if you're happy, you have a tendency to be stronger in your health. <laughs> health and happiness are very much synonymous like that. Okay, so these are some principles we can think about. Uh, so stay positive and uh, stay Krishna conscious like that and don't get an anxiety about the present situation because the materialists want everyone to become alarmed afraid scared and willing to do anything just to protect themselves so they're imposing more and more restrictions taking advantages of people's fear as the fear aspect is becoming stronger if we fall into that, it'll be very difficult for us to practice Krishna consciousness properly. Because we know Krishna is there, and therefore there's no fear. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments, either from the audience here or from the audience in, in, uh, in uh, Cyberland? Thank you for your lecture. Um, there is one question, dear Maharaj. Um, um, Mother Yashoda uh, ha feels also fear because of Krishna. From where does this fear come uh, from death? Um, what does it make it, uh, what does it uh, nourish this fear? What does uh, this fear nourish? And can that uh, fear even be uh, good for our spiritual advancement? Well, Gauramitra does. Yeah, fear can have different causes and fear can have different effects. And there is different kinds of fear. The fear that Mother Yasoda has is the fear is, is her love for Krishna. She wants everything to be nice for Krishna. And so she's afraid that Krishna will fall down and get hurt. She's afraid that maybe a monkey will scratch Krishna or Krishna will do something that'll harm him. 
So that's the, the loving mother's fear for the child. We see that even in the material world, but Mother Yasoda, because she has so much love for Krishna, she wants everything to be the best for Krishna, especially to protect him. But the fear that we have in the material world, there is a called a healthy fear. Prabhupada talked about healthy fear. He called it the healthy fear of Maya, that one becomes fearful of falling into the trap of the material energy. So therefore one becomes cautious not to fall into that trap. So he calls that a healthy fear. In other words, being very careful not to, again, slip into the material energy and fall away from devotional service or do something that will allow us that our spiritual life will s slow down or become checked. So that's a healthy fear. The fear of death, the fear of the condition of the body is actually... Uh, not a healthy fear because it doesn't give you intelligence on it may be it may be alert you to there's some danger here but that fear because they don't know that everything is being conducted by krishna and krishna says in bhagavad gita maya dakshina prakriti suyate sacharacharam etuna navikonte jagarvi paravi partante and that this material energy is working under my direction. It's producing all moving and non-moving living beings. So everything is happening, uh, what we say, there's two causes to everything. There's the immediate cause and the remote cause. We can't see the remote cause. The remote cause is the Supreme Lord or how Krishna puts everything into action this is called providence sometimes events that happen these are the behind that the scene is krishna and he's, he's either making it happen or allowing it to happen he puts material energy in motion and then it has its own laws if one follows the laws of the material energy they become free from the effects of the material energy and they also become free from fear but most people don't follow the laws of the material energy in the sense that they try to control the material energy and then one who tries to control the material energy uh, becomes controlled by the same energy just like people they're smoking cigarettes so they're thinking they're enjoying the smoking but this the cigarette is controlling them they're controlled by that the, the habit that the cigarette has produced. Mm -hmm. So people get attached to different things. And then, of course, fear comes uh, when people don't get what they want and they're afraid of losing something, afraid of not gaining something, afraid of, afraid of uh, uh, losing something after they gain something. So fear is a very strong... Uh, principle in this world, the whole world. It says even Lord Inter is fearful of losing his position in the heavenly planets. A little ant, you see an ant walking along, you put your finger in front of the ant, the ant goes this way and that way, try to get around. He becomes fearful, oh, I'm being blocked. <laughs> so, yeah, so from the ant all the way up to Indra, <laughs> There is the fear element in the material world. So a healthy fear means that uh, I don't want to fall in the material energy. But the way to become free from fear is to simply depend on Krishna in every situation. Knowing that Krishna protects his devotees, if the devotees take shelter of Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's all. So yes, we can use fear in order to become Krishna conscious if it, if, it is, if it causes us to take shelter of Krishna. Even the non-devotees, if they're fearful of this uh, coronavirus, which they are, if they come to Krishna consciousness and start chanting, then they will lose that fear and at the same time they will become happy. <laughs> 
So if, if the fear leads you to Krishna, then that's good. Mm -hmm. That's that's wanted. <clears throat> is there something else? Yes, there is one more question from the internet, and it's from this creation uh, broadcast. Does everyone in their natural relationship with Krishna have some kind of fear? In their natural relationship, no. If they're if they're in naturally in that relationship, there is no no there's no fear. Because Krishna will always re, re, reciprocate with that living being, and that reciprocation is is based on love. Where there is love, there's no fear. <laughs> no, there is no fear in that in relationship with Krishna. Because Krishna is reciprocating the loving, loving expressions of the living entity perfectly, and the devotee is feeling happy in that relationship. But on the highest spiritual platform, the gopis were always thinking, "Oh, I have so much love for Krishna, but Krishna is going to leave me, and then if I don't see Krishna, I'll be unhappy." So that's a different thing. That's that's the ecstasy of love, of losing the association of Krishna that comes by way of feeling love for Krishna and separation. So there's that element of fear, but that's transcendental fear. <laughs> Krishna may go away, but he never goes away. He, it appears like he goes away, but he stays in the hearts of his devotees, so he never leaves. <laughs> I hope that was okay. Okay. Um, I heard in class given by Srila Prabhupada that without being happy, nobody can execute Krishna consciousness. Does that happiness refer to spiritual happiness or we need to be materially happy also? No, we don't need to be material happy because it says that in the Bhagavad Gita, people are not materially happy, they come to Krishna. <laughs> So becoming happy means that we should be positive in our execution of Krishna consciousness. Happiness may come and happiness may go, but if one remains positive and always has faith in Krishna, that Krishna will reciprocate in due course of time, then the devotee can find satisfaction in that and then they can execute their devotional service. I may not be feeling happy now, but I know if I stay in devotional service, I'll be happy. Or I may not be happy at the moment, but I know I'd be happy uh, many times in Krishna consciousness. So happiness is the natural constitution of the soul, and happiness is the principle of devotional service. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita in the ninth chapter, this process is uh, joyfully performed. So it's, uh, it's a very joyful process. Chanting, dancing, taking prasadam, and hearing about spiritual topics, it's all joyful. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Lakanaj. <laughs>